Roll up your sleeves, give up your blood plasma, and in return, you'll be paid cash. What do you think of this concept? Is it unethical, or will it generate more donors? This idea has created quite the controversy between a private clinic and the province. A Canadian plasma resource clinic started accepting paid donors this week in Toronto and is planning to open up a clinic right here in Toronto, Hamilton. Rather, uh, They're handing out $25 to anyone who gives blood. Currently, the clinic is operating without a license from Health Canada, which means it can only collect plasma for research, not for use in any pharmaceutical products or transfusions. Ontario Health Minister Deb Matthews came down on the idea saying uh, she threatened to get a court order against the company to force it to cease operations in Ontario. I'd say the gloves are off and both sides are willing to duke it out. Joining us today in Toronto, we have Dr. Barzin Baharus. Uh, he's the CEO of the Canadian Plasma Resources Clinic. Uh, doctor, about 30,000 Canadians were unknowingly infected with HIV and Hep C during the 80s from tainted blood and plasma, and that led to an inquiry that suggested we should only use blood products from, uh, from unpaid donors to eliminate those who might not be top candidates to donate because they're desperate. What are your feelings about this inquest, and why did you decide to open your clinic? Well, uh, of course, that was a tragedy. Um, however, I'm just going to uh, clarify what it is that we do. Mm -hmm. We uh, collect plasma only for the purpose of manufacturing that plasma into uh, what is referred to plasma protein therapies or for research purposes. This plasma will never be used uh, or for transfusion, direct transfusion to patients. Currently, Canada is self-sufficient when it comes to plasma for transfusion, uh, and that is done by CBS. We are not doing anything to, uh, to compete with them. What we are trying to do is to create these therapies, which we are importing from the United States, where uh, donors are predominantly paid, uh, and these imports last year amounted to around $670 million. So we are trying to create a local industry uh, again, the, the practice is completely safe. Uh, Minister Matthews had concerns about this uh, about a year ago, uh, which I mean, knowing that uh, uh, she probably didn't know what uh, it is that we are doing were, were justified. Mm. She asked the federal government, Health Canada, to uh, have an open consultation in this regard. And the report, uh, the summary report uh, was published on June 27th. Uh, both Health Canada and Canadian Blood Services, as well as some other stakeholders and patient groups attended. And uh, they all emphasized the point that with new technologies, uh, with the new fractionation technologies and testing technologies that are in place right now, uh, giving compensation for plasma donors, as long as that plasma is used for further manufacturing, is a safe practice. Mm -hmm. And okay. I'm just going to also add that the compensation is not cash. It's in the form of a charitable tax receipt or a uh, $25 non-cashable gift card to the donor. That would be their choice. Okay, thank you. And also joining us today, we've got Sean Mahar. He is the executive director of Canadian Doctors for Medicare, uh, an organization with advocates uh, for publicly funded health care in Canada. And as I understand it, Sean, you have uh, major concerns about this clinic for different reasons. Tell us what they are. Absolutely. And, and the point was made uh, wonderfully at the beginning, 30,000 people infected uh, in the 80s and the Creever inquiry reached the conclusion that we should only accept voluntary donations with one unique exception that he named specifically in the inquiry report and we have followed that practice ever since but it's not just Can I just know, ask you a question though sure. um, because I donate blood and I don't understand like I go through a rigorous screening mm -hmm. I don't understand how money factors in to the the difference between uh, healthy blood or tainted blood so um, part of the screening is asking lots of questions about your life. Um, one of the reasons why Creever favored and the WHO also favors voluntary donation is there's no incentive to subvert that screening. If you're performing an altruistic act, you're going to come out and tell the truth. But if you uh, do what this company has done, plonk down a facility right next to a homeless shelter, plonk down a facility right next to uh, low-income housing, and then incent people in a way that will give them a reason to tell uh, to, to say things that aren't true about their, their medical history and their background, uh, then you undermine that screening. And that's why Creever and the WHO have said consistently, don't go down this road. 
Okay, doctor, let me ask you a question about the location of your clinics. You've got one in Toronto. You're planning on opening one in Hamilton. Uh, are these clinics in an area um, that uh, could be considered low income and therefore uh, very desirable for some of the residents of that area? Well, our Toronto locations are, uh, the one is on the U of D campus, just a few hundred meters from uh, Queen's Park, and, uh, and the other one is a ch church in Adelaide. We believe that these are uh, average uh, areas in Toronto, and these uh, uh, allegations are not true. The fact is that I based I on our eligibility criteria, no... Hang, hang on a second. No, no, there's no objections. This isn't a okay. court of law. Let's yeah, let okay. the doctor so finish here. Home, uh, homeless people or any person who belongs to a high-risk population is not allowed to donate uh, plasma. The fact is that we agree it would be ideal not to uh, compensate or give any incentive to plasma donors. As a private company, we, we would have preferred not to do that and re reduce costs. Unfortunately, we are not getting enough donors and we are importing almost all of our plasma protein products from the United States where the donors are, are paid. We believe that it's more responsible to design a system where we rely on Canadian donors, where we have regulatory oversight in Canada uh, that would uh, provide a secure supply of uh, plasma protein therapies doctor, for Canadians. Doctor, I want to get to Sean because I want him to respond sure. to what you just said. If we're importing uh, plasma from the U.S. and people are being paid to donate there, then w why wouldn't you want Canadians to have the same opportunity, number one, and use, uh, get it right from home? Um, well, I, just in terms of the location of the clinics, just before we move off that point, it's across the street from the U of T and right next to the Good Shepherd Ministries uh, homeless drop-in. Um, so average neighborhood is not an accurate description of well, where Queen, this is. Well, I've been to Adelaide and Church, and it's, it's a lovely no, neighborhood. I'm, I'm, so, yeah, I'm I mean, thinking, I'm thinking of the other one, which is in the neighborhood that I live in, and I know the, the, both the clinic and the, okay. the, the homeless drop-in so well. So let's talk but, about the imported plasma that we're using right, right. now. So we have the capacity to move farther down the road that the WHO and Justice Creever told us to move down. We have a mothballed plasma facility in Thunder Bay that could produce all the plasma um, that uh, this company could produce from voluntary donors. So why are we, we not doing it then? Uh, well, that's a very good question for the federal government because uh, um, Health Canada mothballed this facility and then turned around and said, oh, well, here's a company that wants to make money off doing what people were doing voluntarily before. Um, maybe we should issue them a license. And what happened immediately was there was a huge reaction um, from uh, patient groups, from our organization, from a bunch of people who are very concerned about blood safety to say, don't take us down the wrong road. Take us down the road that the WHO has been saying everyone should be going down. We should be retreating from paid donors, retreating from paid donors in the U.S., retreating from paid donors in, in Canada, and using voluntary donors more and more. And this is taking us in exactly the opposite direction. So are direction. you saying that there's enough Canadians to that would donate, voluntary donate plasma, uh, that we wouldn't have to pay anybody, we'd, be, we'd have enough? No, because, I, what, I'm, yeah. I, what I'm saying is, is that we, if we uh, want to start displacing U.S. paid donors, let's displace them with voluntary donors, the best kind of donors there is, according to the WHO, instead of displacing them with paid donors for two reasons. One, um, that's a better source of blood and a more reliable and safe source of blood and plasma. Um, but the second is actually there's research that shows that the more you introduce paid donation into a voluntary donation system, the less voluntary donors you get. So there actually is a difference between paying donors here in Canada and paying donors in the U.S., which is we undermine the system that we know is safest. Okay. Uh, excellent points on both sides. Thanks so much, Dr. Barzan Bahardust and Sean Mahar. Uh, we appreciate your time today, and uh, it was a very informative discussion. Thank you both. Okay, thanks Thank a lot. you very much. When we come back, the province could face a class, ac a class action lawsuit for being irresponsible guardians. That's right, the province, the province of Ontario. You're going to hear all about the physical and sexual abuse that young children experience under the care of the Ontario government. That story coming up next.